shut the front door. I have my sister from another mister on the Sexy Aging <laughs> podcast today. Welcome to the podcast, Nikki. Um, I've been stalking you on Instagram and oh. like one of the very first posts that came up was you dancing like, you know, <laughs> oh, doing no. some kind of walk like an Egyptian move. And I'm like, a lady who knows how to, how to do that move is a lady after my own heart and she's doing it on Instagram what the heck is going on here and I saw that you are an entrepreneur um, you've been in the fitness industry probably as long as I have I reckon we need to just have a chat about that right now so welcome I know. to the Sexy Aging Podcast. Oh Tracy thank you so much you know I do I do so many serious kind of reels and Instagram posts as well but the ones that everyone talks about are the ones where I'm dancing like a daggy middle-aged lady and I really do have to I mean even I feel like oh my gosh should I should I hit post on this one it it's ridiculous but they're the ones that get the engagement and I think there's a lot to be said for being vulnerable and being silly and just going you know what if I'm silly and daggy it allows everyone else to do it as well and we all just want to laugh we want to have fun and that's so much what movement is about isn't it it's it's yeah. not necessarily taking it super seriously all the time it's being able to laugh at ourselves and just have a have a fun time yeah and I think like finding your joy and your community is such a big part of this stage Huge. of life for us so yeah. let's park that because we obviously have a lot to catch up on <laughs> 30 years and, worth <laughs> yeah 30 years worth so um whoever's listening or watching this podcast today um this is pretty fly by night for Nikki and I and it's only that we've realized that but at some point we we could have met and yeah. we're a little bit like woo, like how have we not met before so nikki um i'd just like to invite you to just share a little bit about your journey through the fitness industry i'm literally going to be lying on the floor going yes yes girl <laughs> oh i love that well i'll give you my real I'll, I'll go back i won't go back to you know the day i was born but i'll go back a little <laughs> a, almost that far in that my dad was a, a very good athlete in new zealand and um, my mother had a chronic illness. She had um, rheumatic fever as a teen, teen and her heart was never the same. And she actually passed away when I was 15. So I had these two extremes. I had my dad who was super fit at the top of his game and my mum who was chronically ill. And I think that really shaped me in terms of how I approached my entire life and gave me also great empathy for anyone struggling with a chronic illness and wanting to move and not being able to. And so even now, Tracy, there's never a day that goes by that I don't think I'm so lucky to mm. have a body that does what I want it to do. So that was really where it all started. And I've never really been particularly great at sports, but I've always loved movement. And I knew right from when I was a tiny kid that I wanted to do something in this area. But of course, you know, when I was five or six that was 50 odd years ago there was no such thing as personal training but as soon as I knew as soon as this concept of training people at that stage one-on-one -on -one came up I knew it was what I wanted to do and before that I knew I really wanted to be an aerobics instructor and yeah we literally have the same story <laughs> right there so good it's, yeah it's so good and it's always there has not been a single day where I haven't got up out of bed and thought I'm excited to go to work today. So I, after school, I had a bit of a hiatus and I came, I came to Melbourne, actually. It was either Otago, which is very cold, or it was Melbourne, which is still bloody cold, but slightly better. <laughs> well, oh, I went to Otago. You went like, to Melbourne. Oh. <laughs> um, did you go to Otago? I went to Otago, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Year degree and yeah amazing. amazing came straight out to interpersonal training which was only just a thing then right yes same same yeah. and I can remember on my very first day of uni actually when the lecturer is saying who here knows what they want to do and I don't know if you've heard of a guy called Travis Bell but he's now like a big keynote speaker but he was a PT for many years and Travis was in my group and he puts his hand up and I put my hand up and we both said we want to be personal trainers and we we both ended up personal trainers and were for many many years so um yeah that's that was my journey so I did an exercise science degree I loved resistance training I fell in love with it so I'd been throwing weights around since I was probably 15 16 really just machines in a gym you know and and back then not a lot of girls really were into weights. I don't think the gym instructors really took me seriously. And so I was just playing around on the machines. But on my very first day at uni, I had this incredible lecturer who kind of took me under his wing as often, I don't know, I don't know if you find this as a Kiwi, but sometimes in Australia, people are very, they're 
they like Kiwis, you know, yeah. like Canadians, we, we just loved. And he really took me under his wing and he could see I was passionate about my weights. And I remember doing my a barbell bench press for the very first time. And I looked at him and I said, this is just what I want to do. And I think I want your job. And he laughed. And I ended up getting his job like years later. So I was a sessional academic at Vic Uni for 17 years. Um, 17 of those I taught yeah, in the PT module. And I taught communication and uh, special pops and all that sort of jazz. But then I taught resistance training for 10 years. And that was really my entire subject. And I just loved it. I loved the students. I, I loved the topic, obviously. And then at the same time, I was also still doing a bit of PT. I was doing some PT in my garage. I had little children. And then I stepped away from the uni life and now I've built my own PT studio. As you, well, I didn't build the studio, but, you know, I built my own you know, business. And I now work in Heidelberg Heights in Melbourne and, yeah, have a, a lovely, lovely business. And not that I've, you know, directly gone this route, but you probably find this as well, Trace, that, as I've got older, my clients have got older. As I've gone through menopause, they're going through menopause. And so it's just naturally evolved that a lot of my clients are midlife, they're female, and they're kicking goals and lifting amazing weights and all supporting each other. And it's just a beautiful community. And then I have my remote online clients as well all around the world. And that's me. That's what I do. And I love it every single day still. Yeah. Uh, is it possible that I got a tear in my eye when you said <laughs> you love resistance training that much? And yeah. I actually had a little emotional moment. That's of like, lovely. This is literally a goal, a, like a life saving thing for us. Mm -hmm. You know, like what it we is. understand about the power of resistance training and the health benefits of lean muscle tissue, never more so than women through midlife. Absolutely. is so emotive for me it's like all I can stop I can't stop talking about it so getting online here and having a chat with you Nikki and just going oh my gosh here's someone that 100% gets this conversation that I'm trying to share practices it every day helps other people do it online and in person like we're literally doing the same thing yeah, I need to get so on a plane and come and visit you <laughs> you must it's so it's so lovely and I know that one of your previous guests in another podcast said the issue for midlife women is not so much gaining fat it's mm. losing muscle losing muscle yeah and I I just thought yes that's exactly what it is and I think that that's one of the great um, misconceptions for women in their 40s and 50s is as that muscle starts to drop away they think okay well, what I need to do is I'm gaining fat is I need to get out and do more cardio and yeah. that's what we, I know and really what we need to do is be hitting the weights and doing it ideally in a progressive fashion yeah okay so we've already hit on probably the big question for me yeah. and um gosh I could probably ask you so many more questions about your background and that would be another day over a coffee or a low alcohol wine with ice in it <laughs> <laughs> oh yes I love that's where non-alcohol as well <laughs> that's where I've gone lately um but yeah I just really want to hear your take on your methodology on training and nutrition for women in midlife specifically and, oh, and when I talk about midlife I'm now really wanting to talk to women from about the age of 40 yes it feels like and what we know from science and a lot more research that's coming out around hormonal changes, that these changes are effectively taking place, you know, late 30s, early 40s, that, that uh, you know, shift of fat to muscle ratio is taking place. And it's a little bit insidious at first for mm -hmm. a lot of women. I know lots of women in their 40s who are absolutely kicking ass. Yep. They look incredible, but they're actually experiencing possibly perimenopause symptoms and then Absolutely. you know just a few years later the fat has come on the muscle has dropped because they're doing you know hit after hit after hit class because mm -hmm. when you can do it it feels amazing right yeah but when mm -hmm. it's no longer working for you then things get a little bit messy so wh what are you seeing through your studio through your clients and it's heaps of questions I know but yeah, <laughs> yeah what are you what are you doing to help woman sort of from midlife and into the next stages of life yeah well we first of all we keep our cardio and our weight training separate so when we are doing our weight training it is a real attention to what we are doing 
And so there is adequate rest, for example, when they're training. So especially when we're going to our lower repetitions and they're lifting very heavy weights, they need to rest in between. They don't need to be doing burpees or running to the corner store and back. Um, it is periodized. We work in weeks of, oh, sorry, terms of 10, sometimes 11 weeks. And we generally work in a wave type of periodization. So it means some weeks we go heavier, some weeks we go lighter, sometimes the volume is up, sometimes it's down, sometimes we go a little unstable. So the idea is for me to progress my clients through that term without breaking them down. But they do keep track of all of their data. So they put all of their weights and volumes, et cetera, et cetera, in an app called Strong. Um, and they do a three-day split. So there is plenty of recovery there, but they train hard and they they know what they're doing. So there's also lots of, of room for education for them as well in terms of, look, this isn't just, you know, doing three sets of 20 reps and then doing that next time and next time, next time. We are varying it up, but not so much much variety that you cannot see that progression, but not so little that you don't get bored. But the end of the, the end goal is increased strength and a byproduct of that is increased muscle mass generally increased bone strength increased confidence and something that you mentioned that is so important which is when you're training in a group that increased connection and that feeling of support which is a very underrated um, aspect especially of, of group training you know and you don't tend to get it at gyms nowadays because people come in and they train on their own with their head sets on. But one of the things with training, we know about endorphins, but there are also endocannabinoids, cannabinoids, sorry, which when you train, you feel like I want to connect with people. I yeah. like that person next to me now more than I did when I walked in. And for you and I, Tracy, one of the things that I think probably has drawn us to group training is we know how we can control the mood in a, in a session, right? Mm. So we know, especially early in the morning when all our clients walk in and their hair's on end and they've got no makeup on and you know, their t-shirts inside out and they're adorable and you train them and you know that they're going to have a great day because you've lifted their mood up and that's just magic. And that, that helps, that helps us get through life when we're going out into our day, starting our day, feeling fantastic. Um, So in terms of training, that's kind of the essence of it. I do offer spin classes as well, and that's separate. But one of the things- And I teach spin classes, Nikki. (laughs) Fantastic. I love love spin. I love it. I'm obsessed with the Tour de France. Yeah, so am I. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see it on Netflix? Oh, yes, Unchained. I couldn't, oh I gosh. literally couldn't watch it without my heart rate going up and I, I would be know. yelling at my husband, check this out, check this out. It's this is so, so good. So good. Yeah. Well, one of the things we do need to watch with our midlife clients is because our cortisol is already elevated, yes. you know, we don't want to be keeping on stressing midlife women by doing lots and lots of cortisol inducing training. So I'm always really conscious that when we do any intervals with our swim classes, I tend to keep them fairly short, intense, yeah. but fairly short. So that is just a different way of still working on that cardiovascular fitness and health. That's important, but without, you know, sort of counteracting the great work that they're doing with their weight training by doing something that's going to work against them. So that's really what we do in our studio. And of course, I've got a a podcast, which you do as well. I'm sure that you find this too. This is just such a great way of, of getting information out to clients that you can't always talk about in the studio. Because in studio, you're busy, you're training them. But a yeah. podcast, you can you can do a bit of a deep dive like we're doing today and really get the information out. And it's just yeah. so good. Yeah. I mean, the podcasting thing, just touching on that, is like I've had such an incredible education mm. through some of the guests. You know, when you, when you do reach out to an expert in a particular field around midlife health or women's healthy aging, menopause, like I have literally had my education in menopause through being able to have those special guests yeah. come on, you know, so it's been incredible. But I also really love talking to, to people like you, Nikki, that are doing something real. what I think is really meaningful to an incredibly um, powerful niche of women, like our yeah. Gen X, who have been kind of marginalized mm. um, across most industries. You kind of get to a stage of life. And I think fitness, let's talk about this one. Fitness is actually a really interesting industry because I would say and I've said it a few times 
um, fitness is quite youthified. Yes. And yet, you know, um, you know, 30% of the world's population is, well, 30% of the world's working population are now women 45 to 55. So they have quite a lot of financial power. Yes. And they're demanding that they get product services that suit their stage of life. And that includes the changes that they're going through with their health. Um, so it's really interesting that the fitness industry still really target the Gen Z. Um, they say that Gen Z is the fastest upcoming group of people joining fitness clubs. But I would, I oh, would question no. something like that. I'll just sort of say, yeah, but can they pay your gym fees? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's so true. You know, and I think for women going to our midlife, it is such a great time. Our children are a little bit older. They're starting to be way more independent we've got more money than we've ever had quite often the house is paid off yeah. and so we are looking for that really great experience in a gym and we don't necessarily want to train them with a whole lot of gym bros and we don't want to train in a gym which is grubby um where there's sweat on the benches where we can't find a darn thing we want to train somewhere where which is maybe high tech, high touch, and that there is a sense of being delighted and surprised and having a sense of community. And I think beyond that, Trace, you know, I think that people like me and Donna Aston and lots of other amazing female entrepreneurs in this fitness space, we know that and we're yeah. good at delivering it. And so I think that in itself will change the shape of fitness. And I think there's going to be a real rise of these boutique heart-led women-led gyms out there. Yeah, I agree. This is literally where I was going to uh, right. with this conversation, just sort of challenging the fitness industry to not discount the power of the midlife woman who mm. knows exactly what they want. They'll let you know what they want. They'll pay for what they want. Um, and so there's a real opportunity, you know. So if anyone's mm. out there and is considering, you know, getting into the fitness industry, don't think about what everyone else is doing right now. Have a look at the rising numbers of yes. women that actually want to look after their health. They want to do it right. They're not interested in back-to-back -back hit classes. They actually Absolutely. want people that know exactly what they're doing. Mm. So I, I really love that you're already in that space and that's um, why I've been following you for a while because <laughs> yeah. like, yes, someone is doing it and you're creating the community, you know. Yeah, and um, it's, it's just been wonderful and especially over – over lockdowns and I think that over lockdowns Tracy you went online you you yeah. did everything you could to keep your business going as, as did I you know and I don't know if you feel like this but I feel like that was a real line in the sand for me I came out of lockdown it was like my goodness if I can get my business through this we can do anything and I've been hiding my light under a bushel all this yeah. time I'm gonna step up and so this feeling in the last two years of really stepping up, and part of that is dancing as a unicorn on reels and all yeah. these things. It's like, what the hell? I don't care anymore. I'm going to be authentic. And I'm just, we just, let's do it, girls. Yeah. And it's been marvellous. And really, I, I think you asked me in, in your email about my own personal journey. I struggled with menopause. Okay. And one of the things I really struggled with was even saying that I was, you know, a 47-year-old. I'm actually 57 now, but even saying like I'm a 47-year-old woman or a 52-year-old woman, I would never say my age. And I was really putting up a lot of photos of myself in bikinis and things. I look back and I cringe, but it really was me sort of holding on to that identity that I'd sort of had my life of, you know, really being defined by my physique and all of this stuff. It's like, I, I'm just over that now. So, and I'm, I'm so glad I am because it's freeing. Yeah, it is amazing, isn't it? Like mm. I still, I'm, I'm on, on online now um, and that is my new business because like you mentioned, when, when COVID came, we, we had physical business. So we also had to move to an online platform to retain the business and retain the employees. Yeah. Um, so that was really good. So there was the moment that I'm online thinking, oh, I don't really like this. And then in the journey was teaching me something. It was teaching mm. me to do new things, keep an open mind and realize that actually our customer base isn't just in this location. It's now worldwide. Yeah. And so I came out of that thinking, well, maybe I could do something yeah. online 
for a global audience and it doesn't matter where I live. So, you know, relocating back to New Zealand, which is the bottom of the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then going, well, actually, I can still help women if I do it online. And there, like you, there are parts of it of doubt, right? There's like, oh, who do I think that I am to be, you know, 50 plus in videoing stuff and mm. putting it on TikTok and Instagram and then, you know, shooting content of me lifting weights. Like, how am I, how am I feeling about that? And then mm. people affirm, hey, you're helping me. I'm feeling better. I feel stronger. Um, you know, like your programs are exactly what I've been looking for because my personal trainer who's 25 had no idea what he should be doing with me. Yeah. So when you start to get that kind of feedback, you go, okay, I need to put my own personal doubts aside here because mm. this has always been about helping people, mm. right? Absolutely. And you know what you're referring to there, it's essentially it's imposter syndrome. Yeah. And we, you and I have been in this industry our entire lives. There, there actually aren't that many, I'm sure, career PTs who've been in the fitness industry for 30 plus years. Like we are, we have so much knowledge, so much experience. Why do we continue to feel as impo imposter syndrome, even the tiniest bit, we really do need to get over that and step into it and and show the young women coming up, you know, just own it, you know, just, yeah. just do it. Yeah, well, you are, Nikki, and I am in awe of you and I absolutely look forward to your daily posts that just light up my day. Oh, um, so please you. don't stop. And if thank anyone... You. Anyone hasn't seen Nikki, I'll be putting the um, links in the show notes. So you do need to follow along if you want that energetic lift and the assurance that midlife is a really amazing stage of life to celebrate. 50 plus. 50 you know, plus. I'm 50. I'm, I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50 now. Okay. And I okay. never would have said that, you know. You've got more, more days behind you than in front of you. So I can see you just shifting gears on this. I, I need to shift gears. Life's too yeah. short to, Life to look around. Short. Yeah. I've been having a look at your sexy aging lifestyle course as well, Tracy. Fabulous. Thank you. Fabulous. Yeah. So for listeners, if you have not downloaded that yet, jump on because it just answers all of the questions that midlife women have, which are, I'm thickening up around my waist yeah. and all of the things I used to do don't work anymore. If yeah. you're listening, going, yeah, that's me. Listen on. Um, you know, there's so many things that you cover that are just crucial. You did ask me about nutrition. And yes. in my studio, we have a nutritionist. So I oh, tend awesome. to refer a lot of clients to Steph. Um, but certainly just as a brief overview of what we recommend, definitely need to keep your protein high. So what do we say? Around two grams per... Kilogram body weight. Kilogram, yes, thank you. So if we roughly aim for 25 grams per meal, um, I always like to front load things. So with your steps, and we did, haven't really talked about movement, but you know that good old thing of 10,000 steps a day is chef's kiss, perfect. Yeah. Um, especially if you can get out in nature, do green exercise, go and hug a tree, like get us on some grass, do that stuff. Get some light on your menopausal eyeballs, nice and early in the day. And then while you're there, you're front loading. So you're getting your steps done. So I always say, look, aim for about 5,000 steps, steps by lunchtime and add, aim for about half your protein, you know, intake by lunchtime as well. And then you're not there at eight o'clock at night going, oh my gosh, I've had 30 grams of protein today and I really should be having 120. I'm not going to get them in. So, you know, I, I think you've talked about this before, Tracy, as well, but really starting to look at adding protein to maybe your shakes, your mid-morning shakes, yeah. looking at creatine addition, particularly once you start lifting weights and the one other branch chain amino acid, which is leucine, which um, is, is a really useful branch chain of amino acid as well. And then, you know, you're on a, you're on a pretty good path. Yeah. 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 I actually really like how you called that front loading because I do yeah. feel that most people when they want to get into good habits seem to do seem to manage the first half of the day pretty well yes. and the second half of the day kind of it gets a little bit tougher a whole lot of things come up you don't get to maybe have your protein mm -hmm. shape but if you did it in the morning then you're giving yourself a bit of a head start and I just yeah. I have a sort of thing where if you try to make a few habit changes just start in the morning just change yes. those habit changes in the morning and of course the sleep thing at night uh -oh. Right. So absolutely. Look into those good habits and then 
slowly start to chip away over time mm. you know and within a year you could have changed your whole you know habitual lifestyle over a year because i think people still looking for the quick fix yeah. i want to talk to you about you know things like quick fixes myths and diets and yeah so um from stories that you've heard and women that come into your gym what are you still hearing today that people are interested in exploring definitely intermittent fasting and um you know there's a, a woman oh, i can't even remember her name now dr mindy someone oh yes i know who you're talking yeah, about mindy Hart. Hart. that's it mm. who's very pro intermittent fasting but i'm i'm just not so sure about what do you think about yeah fasting? hey this is a really good conversation because i also follow her and mm. you know when they're a doctor like hey practicing doctor not like a uh what a holistic <laughs> <health>. <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference people there's a difference yeah. um then i do pay attention because oh. they are looking at the cellular level and they are looking at the blood tests and they are looking at things like that to prove out their concept but i don't know i just mm. um yeah well okay so here's my take on intermittent fasting and i think i've mentioned this before if i tell women and i i share this in the course if you have your last meal at seven o'clock at night right so you're eating you're, you're done by 7 p.m at night which is a really healthy time to have it wrapped up yep and then you go to bed latest 10 o'clock at night and then you have your first meal for example a proper protein loaded breakfast at eight or nine in the morning, which is kind of what I do post training, um, then you've not eaten for 12 to 14 hours. It's a fast. It's a freaking fast. You're breaking, I've been, it's I've been doing that all my life. I know. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's so funny you say that because that's it's exactly right. So I agree 100%. We are, we are designed to fast, but generally that period overnight is when we do it. And that's Probably enough. And we know that for midlife women, we tend to train better when we're fed. We don't tend to train particularly well when we're running on empty. And again, that's going to drive our cortisol levels up. And so we really want to monitor it that we feel good, we can train well, we can recover well. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of intermittent fasting when you're sort of you know, having dinner at six and not eating till 1pm the next day. Oh, I mean, but how um, it's counterintuitive. So if it, it you is, were wanting it? to build muscle, and this is one of the, the foundations of managing your menopause or weight gain. Yes. If you want to build muscle and you cannot train at the level that you need to train, no. on an 18 hour fast it's just not possible it's like no. wasting time wasting time wasting money and getting really demotivated because you're not actually able to get the strength gains you probably need so true right. and when the window so is that's so common small, sense it, yeah. it is it is common sense and when the window is so small you know your nutritional variety is cut down the amount of protein you can have in a six you hour you can't get it done <laughs> minimal you just can't get it done so um, yeah, so that's my my take on that. But having said that, you know, I'm, I'm also conscious that everyone is different and I'm open to clients doing their own experimentation if they want to. And for example, I've got a lovely girl I'm training at the moment and she just rang me and said, you're going to, you're going to kill me, but I'm starting Opti Slim. She's not, she's not perimenopausal. She's only, young. She said, I'm going to start at Opti Slim. And I said, you know what? It's not my body. That's not what I would do, but I am not going to I'm not your your lecturer. I'm not your mum. You do you, boo. And yeah. if you feel that that's working for you right now when you're busy and stressed, it's okay. You know, and sometimes doing a bit of a kickstart like that, she'll see the scale go down a little bit. And we know that that can be very psychologically motivating. So I've been in this business long enough that I'm not stringent about you must do this in this way I'm a lot softer with clients but I will guide them in the direction that they need to go and you know I will often say you can do that um, you will get better results doing what I suggest you do but I understand you need to do that for a bit and then you'll come back and you'll do it my way <laughs> yeah no I agree I agree Nikki yeah. and I think some of that softening comes because of you know you know that this journey actually takes years so to it re does take years reboot your body um get the goals that you'd hope for it actually takes a lot longer than people hope mm. and it does why it's a bit like watching paint motivating. dry really isn't it it, yeah. it does take a long long time but yeah. and i guess that's why the process itself has to be enjoyable and you yeah. don't want to focus i mean i think you always must have a very strong why 
but you don't want to be focused on the end goal to the to the detriment of your day-to-day joy of what you're doing. And people yeah. listening who maybe aren't training might go, what the hell, day-to-day joy? But there is a joy to it. There is joy in training. You know, you feel great doing it. You, you do connect. And you would surprise yourself if you're not exercising now how addicted you can become to exercise quite quickly. It's, it's nature's reward for yeah. activity. Yeah, I mean, we're obviously like hugely passionate advocates of moving. Yes. So for us, to, you and I to have a conversation on this, like I'm feeling everything you're saying and I still think and wonder, you know, how do I get people that have never exercised, um, you know, that they're now struggling with midlife health challenges, like how do we get them, you know, just mm. taking that first step forward? So I'm really exploring that conversation. I'm really keen to talk a little bit more, yeah. you know, with other people that, because we we're pre, we can preach to the converted. So we'll get people that come from other fitness studios and they feel more aligned with you, for example. Yeah. And it's quite easy to get them going. Yes. But it's like, what about everyone else who's like never stepped into a gym, never picked up weights, and now is really struggling? I mean, I, I'm hearing mm. these stories all the time from women. Like, just got me thinking, you know, I might do something about it. <laughs> It's difficult, isn't it? And I, yeah. I and it comes down to motivation. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think that for a lot of my clients, they love the aesthetic results, they love feeling stronger, but a lot of them say it's the mental health that really keeps me going because it's just such a great start to my day. I'm calmer, I'm happier, I'm more creative, yeah, I'm productive because I've trained in the morning. And that alone is just so motivating. Um but I have clients who come to me who want to be there, Tracy, as probably do you. So I know what you're saying with the women who really would benefit from doing weights, which is everyone. Everyone. How to get them. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about someone because I absolutely 100%, she will not be listening, but my darling sister-in-law who now has osteoporosis and she's been told you must weight train. It's so important. And she dragged herself off to see an EP. I felt so sorry for this poor EP and really hated every minute of weight training. And I'm sure the EP did as well. And she ended up dropping out. It's like, well, how do we get someone like that to fall in love with weight training? And I just, I just don't know that we can, you, you, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make it drink. How do we how do we do that? All we can do really, I think, is lead by example, show a variety of different styles of not even training, because training is kind of training, but different styles of studios so that there's not that perception anymore of it's all just the big gym bros and it's yeah. hardcore and you know, grimacing and it's dark and very macho, that you can be in a beautiful place with art on the walls with a whole lot of gorgeous women. And still lift hardcore and still yeah. get really strong and really awesome. Yeah, no, I agree. I really love that. Um, <clears throat> other than the intermittent fasting, which we kind of touched on, have you have you heard or have you had to dispel any other kind of myths around training and diet lately? Is there any trends that you you've heard what, of? Tracy, I think this is one of the really good things about social media because when we are on social media, you you let the world know very, very clearly, um, you know, I'm not... I'm not a fan of Trump and I do this and I do yeah. that. And, you know, I'm, I'm very much a left-wing liberal. And, and so when people come to me, they know I'm probably not going to be super, super impressed if you start saying, I want to try paleo or I want to try keto. You know, I'm going to be like, hmm, probably not the way we fly. So, um, no, at the moment in my studio, no one is doing anything too dire um, but sometimes when people pop into my DMs, they then they might say, They're asking, yeah. Yeah, I mean, intermittent fasting is always a big one mm. because it's easy. Not doing anything is is easier than actually doing your food prep and putting it all in the fridge. <laughs> you, you've like, actually oh, explained that really that. well because I'm thinking, <laughs> who would want to starve themselves for that? I would literally kill my family I know. hours of 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. if I couldn't eat. Like, no one would survive in this household. So 
you've now made it really clear that doing nothing is easier than food prep. You're it's right. An easy option. So, and also a lot of women are so low in calories anyway. Yeah. Because they've tried to lose body fat. So they're like, okay, well, 2000 calories is, well, I'll bring it down to 1500. You know, I've, I've seen in my fitness pal, that's what I should be having. Oh, well, that's not working. I'll bring it to 1200 and just lower and lower and lower. So then it's like, well, fasting is not that much of a big step. So, um, Yes, but anyway, apart from fasting, yeah, there's always paleo kind of floats around, keto floats around a little bit, but generally people are pretty sensible around me because they know already that my vibe is lots of nutritional variety, lots of fruit and veggies. To be honest, Tracy, I always quote health first. Health is everything. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that is aesthetics. And then, and of course, under health then becomes your metabolic health as a midlife woman. Yeah. How can we keep you thriving? And not just, again, how your body fat is, but how your brain feels. What's your brain fog like? And even just upping your protein will help your brain better. And then getting out into nature and, again, connecting with people in the gym, and, and that will also help with, with how you feel mentally. Yeah. So, yeah. Love, loving everything you're saying, Nikki. I, I don't dispute what anything we're lovely I'm so yeah. glad it's always going to be multifactorial isn't it yeah and, yeah, and I, I think it's so important to work on yourself first because especially when you're going through menopause I started to really um look at my husband with narrowed eyes you know I'm like do, do I really want to be married to this person he was driving <laughs> crazy when we're going through lockdown Oh, I was yeah. lockdown <laughs> and menopause. Ah, that was me as well. <laughs> like, Can you imagine? It's amazing I'm that so that four glad. went in and four came out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was joking with my other friends around lockdown with their family, saying, "Can we just like do a mid lockdown family swap?" Like any family will do, but can we just swap? Because I'm going to kill the ones I'm with. So, um, you know, I, I feel like with menopause, really making sure that your own, your own mental health, physical health is good because often you start to, to look at the people around you going, it's your fault, you yeah. know? So um, that, that was another real big learning curve for me as well. So thank yeah. God we're through it because I've got a great husband. Yeah. It was a really difficult time for us. And I'm so glad, you know, what you mentioned earlier in the podcast, there are so many amazing women now getting to the stage and going, why the fuck isn't anyone talking about this? Mm. And not just women in the fitness industry, but there are researchers like Dr. Stacey Sims and Kelly McGonigal who are like, we need to really open this up and start talking about this more. And when you start to deep dive into perimenopause and menopause, it's like, it feels to me like everyone's talking about it. And that is so refreshing. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It really yeah. is. It's fantastic. I felt like I was on the crest of that wave as well because yeah. I hadn't heard anything about perimenopause as I was going through it. And that was the whole reason of, you know, starting the podcast and doing all the other things was because I felt so alone and I wasn't having a conversation with anyone. So, you know, one of the best ways to have a conversation with someone is to invite them on a podcast. (laughs) Look, it truly is. Sometimes when I'm on a podcast and I'm I'm interviewing someone that they get off and they go, oh my God, that was like a therapy session. It is like therapy. (laughs) It's totally. (laughs) So true, isn't it? Bearing our souls. Yeah. So for you, Tracy, do you find, like, are your friends a similar age to you? Like, do you discuss this with your girlfriends? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> when I was in Malaysia and I was working in the fitness industry there, I was probably the older person. So yeah. all, you know, my team and my friends, even my friends. Because you were teaching, were, right? So Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. I built a community and people were a lot younger. The other thing is I had a geriatric pregnancy. So I had my son when I was 42. So when you're taking um, your kids to school and you're the older person, you might not, you may or may not make friends in the school environment. I was lucky that I did. And so my friends were a lot younger. So when it came time for me going through perimenopause, I really couldn't have a conversation with anyone. There were very few people that I could relate to. Yeah. Um, just, I, I started to feel really anxious about my symptoms mm. and what was going on with my state of mind. And, um, yeah, I just felt like if I opened up about what I was experiencing, I felt like that would cut me down. And that was all mm. part of 
the messed up anxiety, anxiety. Yeah. yeah that comes with a symptom of menopause yes. when I came back to New Zealand um two years ago one of the very first things I did was I googled menopause community New Zealand and it connected yeah. me to some other woman also doing very similar things with websites and um communities and facebook pages and stuff and that has kind of elevated me and given me the confidence to talk about yeah. menopause also i feel like and you're probably the same um nikki people look to you they don't really see that number that's associated with your age no because you know you're fit you're healthy you're vibrant you're creative and they probably on some level go oh when i'm 50 something i want to be like her yeah but you know that's because we're very open with you know our experience when they hear oh you know you're going through menopause they're like no way is that what it looks like well it yeah. could look like this if you look after yourself yeah you know? so right. i think you know i didn't really have that support when i was in malaysia hey look one of the really cool things is uh, i just got back from malaysia two weeks ago and you know what i did up there oh. i took menopause workshops did you really and it was sold out waitlisted like two, wow. two events. and that just I came away thinking like who would have thought that I would have mm -hmm. left in that state and then re-educated myself and gone up there and helped people Amazing. You know? so it that. is a really cool journey I'm actually like having a moment right now yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> What the fuck? Like it's I really just went full circle. Full circle, it's yeah. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And there's real power in going through something, going, I am struggling with this, and then doing a deep dive and going back so other women don't have to struggle. That is great. And it gives you such empathy to go, you know what? I I hear you. I I know exactly how that feels. Not for you, but for me, I know exactly how that feels. And it's interesting when you talk about, you know, feeling anxious and worried that other women might judge you and all of that stuff. And that feeling of, of anxiety and worry, I just, I, I think when I went through menopause, I didn't quite understand that that was menopause. You yeah. know, like I yeah. expected hot flushes, I expected weight gain, but no one told me about the anxiety. Nobody told me that I'd be awake at 2 a.m. worried about nothing. Or being you know, awake, worried about being awake. <laughs> yeah, worried, worried about being awake. Exactly. And all this weird stuff. And the other thing I, I wanted to mention to anyone listening is when we talk about changing your life, taking up exercise and all of those things, I want you to remember that we change as people as we get older. Mm -hmm. We continue to grow. And that is very much part of being a growth mindset. So just as you can look back at when you're 18 and go, I'm a different person. I might have similar values, but the way I see the world is, is way more perhaps nuanced. It's more complex. I know more. I was an idiot at 18. I really kind of like to think I know my stuff now. You're going to be different at 60. You're going to be different at 70. And what we want is that you are being your best self, moving towards your best self as you get older. And so for you, if you're listening and you're, you know, 40 and you're not training, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be training when you're 50. Your 50 might be the best you've ever been. Yeah. You might be the strongest you've ever been. You might be the strongest you've ever been at 70. So keep keep going and growing eh? keep going keep growing and I know as a trainer I quite often have people ring up and they might not know you know how old I am and I'll have a conversation like this hi Nikki I'm thinking of joining your studio look I'm 40 I've had two children so you know I'm leaving it really late and I'm like what are you, guys? Are you kidding me and I'm like I'm 57 I've had two children like you yeah. can do this girlfriend it is yeah. talk about not too late this is just the beginning of your life so oh, Nikki that's so awesome it's so awesome to hear you say that I think well, a lot of people so need much to about hear mindset. That. yeah 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 hey Nikki thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today I'm going to push pause and say goodbye to the listeners but you and I we're going to keep talking <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a virtual coffee. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me, Tracy. And I hope that your listeners got a little bit out of that.